Today I want to talk about a more important matter about sex trafficking. It doesn't matter what city or state or country you're in, it's going around. So I made a compila compilation of videos on that matter. So you need to look out for these signs. But before I get started, I want to tell you something. A similar thing that happened to me. And I didn't think nothing of it at the time, but now I may have been a victim. Been a victim. One day, I was getting off from work at the post office. I was on a 12-hour shift. And my um, bar friend mom was taking me home. And she asked me, did I want to go anywhere to get something to eat? I was like, no, I'm going to order a pizza. And she was like, don't, don't be opening the door for anybody. And I was like, okay, but I'm like, I wonder why she said that. So I got home. I didn't order the pizza because of what she said. Then a few moments later, maybe about 15, 30 minutes later, I heard a knock at the door. I said, who is it? It was some man at the door. I didn't know who it was. So I said, who do you want? He said, somebody, I don't know what he said. I said, they don't live here. I don't know them. He left. Next thing you know, this white woman came to the door. She knocked on the door, she was like, help, 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 I need help. I need to use your phone. And I'm like, why did she come to me? If she needed help, she could have went somewhere else. It's a store down the street. I was like, I can't help you. And I was praying like, God, please don't let this lady really need you helping. And I'm scared to open the door. But after a while, the same black dude came back to the door. He was like, open the door. Why you won't open the door? And he started twisting on the knob. And I was like, what do you want? What do you want? Go away. I don't know who you are. He was like, um, what did he say? You took my money. I know you took my money. I'm just getting off work. I didn't take his money. I don't even know him. Evidently, he was watching me when I got out the car by myself. And he knew I was at home by myself. But that happened like two years ago. But I don't know really was I a victim or did he really think I stole his money. But I want you to watch some more of this, of what happened to these victims. And you let me know in the comments, do you think I was a victim of it or what it was very scary the only reason why he left is because I was like I'm calling the police I'm calling the police just picture somebody twisting the knob you don't even know who they are but anyways please be aware it's Thanksgiving time, the holiday time, and everything is happening. People start acting crazy. So, let's get into this video. Drop my baby girl off at school. My car started acting up. So, her dad told me to catch a lift and leave my car there. And he would fix it for me. So, I called the lift. Got in the car with the lift. Noticed that they were taking all these different turns, no major streets, was not following the GPS that they were supposed to be following. So I asked the guy, I said, why are you making all these turns? You know, this is not the way to my job. And he wouldn't answer me. He kept on just driving. So I'm noticing that I'm going down these different sidewalks, these neighborhoods. I'm so no nervous. Like, I can't even really talk. 
So I'm asking the guy, like, why are you turning here? This is not the way to my job. So he kept telling me to be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, like, hold on. I know what I'm doing. So he pulls up behind this other, he pulls up behind this other car, like a big truck. I don't even know what it was. So I'm like, just nervous because I'm on the phone the whole time and I wasn't paying attention the whole while that he was making all these turns. So I asked him, why don't you go around this truck? Why are you just sitting behind the truck like this? I have to get to work. And then he wouldn't answer me. So a black guy got out of the truck. He had braids in his head and everything. And he started opening the gates to this warehouse or whatever it was and was telling the car that I was in the lift driver to back into the warehouse or whatever so I'm like what are you doing you know like this is not the way that you're supposed to be going to my job so I'm telling y'all to be safe I had to get out the car and run I was in a lift I have all his information and everything I was riding in a lift car trying to get to work because my car was acting funny I called the police and everything I'm still waiting on the police I'm safe I'm waiting at a gas station um, I'm just saying be safe so y'all can share this video. I'm in Houston, Texas. I was on Richmond and Dunville and it's real out here. You have to be safe so anybody who's riding in the What's up? I am a human sex trafficking and rape victim. Um, I have been shout out to you that if you see a random hundred dollar bill on your um car windshield to literally just run in your car or run back in the store because that's how they're trying to lure you which is so sad so let me go ahead and get right into the story time because this is the time that i almost got abducted this happened on wednesday of last week and I just got from work, I just got home, changed in my comfy clothes, and I just really, really, really wanted something to drink. I was like, I don't know if I want to get Starbucks or if I want to get Boba, because I love Boba. If you're on my Snapchat, 
My snap is going to be right here. Well, the boba tea place is five minutes away from my house. I drove over there just by myself, just me. And I went in there, got my boba. Everything's cool. And I got there at 7 p.m., like 7 to 7.30. So because of daylight savings, it's getting so, so, so dark, like early. And it was like pitch black outside, like super dark. There was not any lights in the parking lot. The only light there was was um, the light that has like the signs, which that doesn't really give off as much light. Thankfully, I parked in the very front, but the fact that I parked in the very front and it still happened is actually crazy. Like, I don't know, this just experience was so wild, but oh, I got something in my eye. Went to go get boba, came out, and I saw a lady. She had on black sweats with a black puffer jacket and she looked like a little bit taller than me like maybe this tall and she was sitting on the hood of my car the hood as in i don't even know car term terminology at all so the cars like this she's sitting literally on here like waiting for me and i walk out and immediately i go to my door she's still right here and her hands are literally behind her back like this sitting on my car i had my keys in my hands i was also on facetime with my cousin thankfully because if something would happen she would have heard all about it she would have heard it and she knew where i was at so thank god i was on facetime with her and i had my drink in my hand had my keys in my hand which i had my keys in my hand because i saw on twitter that um if you have your keys in your hand you can easily just like use that as self-defense so um i have a habit of just doing that with my keys like just having my key out facing out having it in my hand like just in case you know like i'm already paranoid as it is so i she was sitting right here with her hands behind her back i went around my car to open my door i opened my door so my door was between me and her thankfully and she was like ma'am ma'am like i need your help i need your help like please help me da, 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 da. she was like come over here and i was just like the first thing that popped in my head was to look around me so i looked to the right and i looked to the left the left there was nobody the right was a van that i think was hers the front door was wide open and so was the back because there was like a little door in the back obviously like the car is and then the front so the front door was open her ignition her keys were on in the car her car was running i was just like first of all why is she leaving her car running and why is both of her doors open like whatever maybe the front but why is the back door open i remember seeing the car and thinking like what the heck and then she's sitting on my car waiting for me that already sketched me out and thank god that i saw all this crazy stuff happening on twitter and that even like that as soon as she said i need help i looked at the car and i realized like oh hell nah so i literally was like on facetime with my cousin she literally heard everything i was like oh no like i'm busy right now like i can't i'm sorry and she got mad she got really really like aggressive and mad and i was like i'm sorry like i'm busy i went in the car closed the door and locked it when i looked to the left tell me why she was standing right by my driver's side in the window about to freaking trying to open it like about to open the door she was just staring at me right there so that meant that when i got in super freaking fast inside my car and i locked it she went around my car to try and like chase me or to get me or whatever the case was if you need help first of all you would not leave your car running and you would not be sitting on somebody's car waiting for them to come and you would have went inside and asked an employee or a member of the team or somebody to help you you wouldn't just be standing out there waiting around for somebody to go to their car like honestly if i never saw that stuff on twitter i would have probably been naive and would have been like yeah like what can i help you with and then she was like no come over here come over here what i think was she was trying to do was literally grab me and put me in the car because the car was already running the doors were open and she said to come here so that's probably what was going to happen never happened to me in my life and street and um this girl had stopped me 
and she was like you know hi how are you doing do you mind if i have a word with you and usually like i said sometimes i stop sometimes i don't it depends on how i felt but um i was just like okay i just went to hear she looked like a regular girl like she looked like she was in college she looked about my age about 24 25 um Oh, at that time, I was 23. She looked about my age. Um, she was dressed pretty well. Um, her weave was kind of off, but it's okay. It's okay. You know, I just thought it was, you know, like two weeks old, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she stopped me, and she was just like, um, do you mind if I have a word with you? My foundation, I'm sorry, is acting up right now, so I literally have to open it and be ghetto and put it on there like this. <laughs> So she stopped me on the street. So like I said, she stopped me on the street and she was like, you know, can I just have a quick word with you? I just want to, you know, share something with you that um, I'm a part of this organization. We talk about God and stuff like that. Um, we talk about the women. Do you know that God is a woman? And she, you know, showed me a biblical verse in the Bible and stuff like that. And she was just like, you know, um, just we were both just, you know, talking about God and stuff like that. And so she had said that, oh, you know, you seem really interested in the topic and stuff like that. If you um, are even more interested, I have um, study Bible sessions on Wednesdays at um, at 2. And I think this was like a Monday or a Tuesday when this happened. And so we had exchange phone numbers. And um, we were just talking it up. I was like, yeah, you know, I don't mind coming to some Bible study. You know, at the what I was going through, you know, I always like to listen to the word or get some type of advice and stuff like that when I am going through situations that are disappointing. So I was really up for it. I was like, yeah, you know, I don't mind stopping by, you know, your Bible study and stuff like that. And um, so we exchanged numbers. She asked me what school I go to. I told her what school I went to. Uh, but that was pretty much it. She didn't really get into far detail about where I lived or how old I was and stuff like that. She didn't do all of that. We exchanged names. I do not remember her name, but we did exchange phone numbers. I think her name was like Danielle or something like that. It was something with a D. So, like I said, so we exchanged numbers, and I was like, okay, so I'll text you next week um, for the, the Bible study. So moving forward, uh, the next week comes, and it's the Wednesday. So I think I only had one class on Wednesday, which was in the morning. So I was just like, you know, oh, I should attend the girls' Bible study and stuff like that. And so I text her and I was like, you know, hey, like it's Nicole that um, you talked to last week. Um, are you still having the Bible Bible study today at two? And so she texted me back and was like, yes, I'm still having the Bible study. I'm so glad you texted me. Yes, definitely come at two o'clock. And she gave me the location and everything of where is that. And I was like, okay, see you then. So two comes around. I think I believe it was on. No, I I, I remember it was on Wabash and um. I don't know if any of my Chicagoans are watching this video right now, but it was right it was right over there by the store called Jergonaut. Yeah, it was right over there by that store called Jergonaut, and it was also it's also like a 7-Eleven over there, and um, it's a bunch of other stores over there too. But it was right on Wabash, and so the building was like a huge black building or whatever, right on the corner. And so as I'm walking up to the building, I'm texting her like, "Yeah, I'm walking up to the building now. See you soon." And she was like, "Okay." So I get to the building. Well, let me describe this you all so i get to the building and it looks vacant and i'm like it looks like no one is here but i'm like okay whatever maybe their cars are parked in the back i don't know so i go up to the door and i try to open the door and the doors are locked so i'm texting her and i'm like hey like the doors are locked like i don't know what's going on um no one looks like they're here. Are you sure you send me to the right location and she was like yeah yeah are you you know on wabash and I can't remember the exact location. I was like, yeah, I'm at the right location because I typed it into um, my maps and I had Siri walk me there. So I'm like, yeah, I'm at the right location. And she was like, oh, well, just um, come to the back and see if we're in, um, we're in the back. Come to the back. And I was like, okay. So my stupid self walks to the back. So I walk to the back and I see a man standing there smoking a cigarette. And I went up to him and I asked him, like, hey, is this the so-and-so building? And he said, yeah. And I was like, is there a Bible study going on here? And he was like, oh, I don't, I'm just over here taking a cigarette break. I was like, oh, okay. So I'm steady texting her like, hey, like there's no one back here. Um, are you sure you sent me to the right location? She's like, yeah, are you at da da da? And something just told me that something wasn't right. 
So I actually um, walked around the building one more time and tried to open the door again. And I was just like, my spirit just kept telling me something's not right, something's not right, something's not right. So I went across the street to the 7-Eleven and I asked the man that worked there, like, hey, like, does someone work in that building? Is that building, um, is it abandoned? Like, you know, is somebody over there? Because, you know, I'm supposed to meet someone over there. And the guy was like, ma'am, that abandoned, that building has been abandoned for two years now. It used to be, it used to be some real estate building. I don't know. I, I can't remember what he said the building used to be. All I remember very vividly is that he said the, the, the building getting stumbled because this, this story is so creepy that the building has been abandoned for two years now. So no one's over there. And I was like, what? So after he told me that, the girl is steady texting me like, hey, like, did you make it? Are you okay? Like, did you find the place? Like, she's really asking me if I'm okay. And you're trying to just keep listening. So she's like, did you make it? Did you make it? Are you okay? Like, did you make it? Um, have you found the place yet? And I'm just like, I just didn't reply. So I was just like, something is not right. I didn't reply, and she just kept texting me like, hey, did you make it? Did you find the building? And I just left because it just it just wasn't right. Like, the it looked abandoned. Like I said, when I walked up to the building, it looked abandoned. And I was so afraid. Like, this girl, you know, this random girl I just met just sent me to an abandoned building. Like, I didn't know what was going on. So fast forward into... After that situation, I just left. I stopped texting her. I blocked her and everything. Fast forward to three months later. So I get a text from the group chat that I was in with my friends. And one of my friends um, has sent me a Facebook ad of girls going around in Chicago saying, beware of these girls. Um, it wasn't a Facebook ad. It was just like a Facebook warning on Facebook. It was a post. And it was saying, be aware of these girls that are going around stopping females, talking about the woman of God and stuff like that, and l trying to lure you back to a Bible study. They're a part of a sex trafficking organization. You guys, when I saw that post, my mouth dropped. And what also was creepy is because I was so stuck on reading the post, I kept reading over like, are you serious? Then I looked at the picture of the four girls that they had that were doing it, and one of the girls was on there that stopped me. I flipped out. I was texting my group chat back like, oh, my gosh, this happened to me. Like, that just happened to me three months ago. The girl that's in the photo, I recognize her. That's the girl that stopped me. I had some friends that had gone up to U of O to go to college, and they had an extra room in one of their apartments. It was at that time that I met a boy or a guy who pretended... Um, to take interest in me. I really thought he liked me and we got along really well. He was really funny and charming and he had a nice car and he, he always picked up the tab, he had nice clothes. And he told me he was a record producer, that he had a band um, up in Portland and that's why he frequently went out of town. There's a saying that says when you take a child by the hand, you take the mother by the heart. And I really think that's what happened for me because I had this new little girl and this man who showed this desperate attention towards her, like he wanted to really help make this family that I really wanted for my daughter. And he invited me to move in with him after about six months of dating. And I was really excited. And I brought him down to Southern Oregon to meet my family and everything seemed fine until we arrived in Las Vegas. He said we were moving there because that was the entertainment capital of the world and being a record producer and having um, a band that that's where they were going to get the most gigs and the most jobs and that's where his job was leading him. So I desperately uh, wanted to go with him, to be with him and, and to start this family that, that he promised me. He pulled up to an escort service and he said, this is how it works in Vegas. I've spent a lot of money to get you here. I put first and last on an apartment. I filled your fridge up with food and you're going to need to get earn that money back and I felt I felt trapped I felt like um, how am I going to get out of this and you didn't know if you were going to live or die you didn't know what he was going to do or what he was capable of and so it's it was really scary I can remember just running through the casino thinking like, these people don't even have a clue what's going on they're just you know, cha-ching, cha-ching, Las Vegas, yay! And they're 
doing all this stuff and I'm I'm running for my life. I'm running from a man that has forced me into doing things that I didn't want to do. When you have a, a trafficker that's waiting at home with your child and says, if you don't bring home $1,500, you're going to find your daughter out on the corner. I think I was probably more frightened to go home than I was to be in the room. Because if you got robbed, it was your fault for being stupid. Um, if you got raped, it was your fault for not watching your back. Anything that happened to you was typically your fault, and you incurred more punishment um, for allowing those things to happen to you. So it made you always... To the event, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't having a good time. And I was like, you know, I'd rather be at the house now working on a project with, you know, Neen and Michelle. It's just whatever I was feeling, I had been feeling that way for the past few days. And some of you may have heard me mention that I was supposed to go to a brunch yesterday and then this party. Moving forward to what happened when I left the party. I took an Uber out there because it's like, 40 minutes from where I live. So I took an Uber to the event and I called for Uber to pick me up. The Uber driver came to the location of where I was. One of my guy friends saw me getting in the Uber and he was like, don't get in that Uber. He was like, I'll take you home. Like, why? Like, don't get in that car. And I'm like, it's all good. I've already, you know, it's already paid for. So I'm going to, you know, go ahead and leave, you know. And I was like, but I, I didn't have his number. Like, I call him a friend, but I always see him at this spot whenever I go. So I said, just I'll, just give me your number, and I'll talk to you the entire way until I actually, you know, get home. And he was like, okay, I got his number. So the Uber driver was looking at me, just turning back around. I had on a like a fitted, like it's called a tuxedo dress. So I had on this tuxedo dress, kind of cut open in here, and it was a short dress with some boots on. The guy started slowly pulling off of the lot. But I'm looking at my phone. My phone is not showing me that he has actually even picked me up yet. And I said, hold up. I said, it's not showing on my phone that you have picked me up. I said, and I send my location to my family whenever I'm in an Uber. I don't give a fuck who is picking me up from an Uber. If it's a woman, if it's a man, I always send my location to my brother, my kid's father. I don't give a fuck, oh, even when I'm traveling. So the guy looked back at me. He was like, huh? I said, ain't no fucking huh? I said, why haven't you started the fucking trip? I look up at his phone. His phone is in the holster, the little thing that you have to have, whatever. The screen is black. The screen is fucking black. And he had his phone to the side. And I said, why is he, I said, why isn't your phone on? He didn't respond to me. And I said, Push the fucking button on your phone so I can see that your phone is on. Do you guys know that this nigga tapped his fucking phone and the screen was black? His fucking screen was black. He had never fucking accepted the trip and I am in his car. He started driving off out of the lot and he, we get on the street. And I said, stop the fucking car. Stop, like, stop the car. You, stop the car. He touches his phone at the bottom of the screen. And when he touched the fucking screen at the bottom, the nigga phone powers on. Do you know that I had to fucking jump out of a goddamn moving car last night? Two o'clock this morning, I had to fucking jump out of a goddamn moving Uber car. Le if I am missing anything right now, I can 
go back in my mind of what happened last night to me getting in this goddamn Uber car or this Uber. Ladies, anytime you get in a fucking Uber car, Uber, a, a, a whatever, Lyft, Uber, I don't give a fuck who it is. If you do not know the person, the first thing I want you guys to do is to make sure that the fucking door opens. When, as soon as you get in, put this in your mind right now. If you close that goddamn door when you first sit down in an Uber, make sure you can open it right back up. Make sure that you're able to open it back up because some of these Uber drivers may have their child safety lock on when you first get in the car. Now, some of you may not ever even think of that or even take that into consideration. If somebody is trying to do something to you, of course, they're going to they're going to prevent you from getting out of that car. If they smart enough, if motherfuckers are smart enough, they will they will have it to where you cannot get out the car like I was able to get out the car last night. I felt something about him when he kept looking at me strange. I'm looking like this man just watching me. I'm like, shit. But you know what a lot of us do when we get inside of an Uber? We automatically just, we're, we're riding. So we're texting. You know, we watching videos. We're looking at shit on Instagram. But we're not fucking paying attention to the nigga who is supposed to get us to our destination safe. We take our eyes off of Uber drivers all the time. To know that this man had me in his fucking car and he had not even started the app. Do you know he could have done anything to me last night, taken me anywhere last night, whatever the fuck? Because you know what? Uber would have said it shows that he canceled the trip. When I got out of his fucking car, do you know I get this notification from Uber saying trip canceled, that we are now looking for another rider a driver to get you to your destination, whatever the fuck it says at the bottom. Of the trip council, it shows that this man had canceled this fucking trip. But this is what stood out to me because I ended up calling the critical response line last night with Uber. Is that when I pulled up his information this morning, it shows the actual street that I jumped out the car on. It shows the location of where he actually started the, the, the supposedly route was. From Grisham to Wellham, whatever road it was that I got out. Because he was continuing to try to go through the light. And when I seen him not slowing down or stopping, I jumped out the fucking car. So when I exited his vehicle, the app shows... Because he turned his phone on. The app can't fucking trace somebody if they got their phone off. Uber cannot trace their drivers once they turn the app off. It is no way. The app only shows them once they are online. It need, that's why I said I hope you guys record this small part. And I know it's not a lot of people on here right now. I'm fine with that. But he probably thought I was, I had been at the club. So yeah, she getting in the car. She got on the dress. You know, she got on a low cut top. And maybe she's drunk. Maybe she's high. She probably is fucked up. So I'm going to turn this fucking phone off. And I'm going to share when I get off in my story the information that Uber sent me. I am also going to share to show my ride. Not, it don't show 